Join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. In this episode of Safari Season, our honorable guest is the most famous bow hunter and host of the show Ultimate Shot, Archie Nesbitt. Welcome to Namibia. Here we are, just arrived. We've seen a bunch of wildlife, some really unique wildlife on the way in. Uh, they've seen a brown hyena, could be on bait. So uh, we're looking forward for, to a really exciting hunt here and lots of fun and some great people. And uh, we'll be back to show you some hunting pictures on Ultimate Shot. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, after that long, dusty road, that really hit the spot. And a long flight. But our bags are here. We got all our equipment. All we got to do is be able to use it. So uh, it's a great spot, great people, and free range. It's hard to come to the southern part of Africa and think about hunting free range. Uh, a lot of places, high fence, high fence, high fence, and you don't see the high fence, but you know it's there. This is cattle fence. There are some areas with high fence, but it's mainly cattle fence. And every one of the animals we saw coming in today is all free range, and they're not really wild. You know, you, you come to this country and you think, I'm a bow hunter, and this has been gun hunted, and they're all going to be wild and spooky, but no, we saw some uh, definite potential shot opportunities today coming in, so stay tuned. We'll be back with the ultimate shot here in Namibia in July of 2017. Good morning. Good morning, Vlado. So this is my first morning in this great country. Let us introduce you to Burkhardt. <laughs> oh. This is our four-legged professional hunter in Namibia. Thanks to his efforts yesterday, we managed to get several really rare trophy animals. One of them is so rare and untouchable to hunters that there are even no records of shooting it down contained in the Safari Club record book. The lack of description of this animal in the book is quite an interesting fact in itself as long as records are present for all other predators that compete in vain with the honey badger. Such as this leopard, cheetah, and even the lion prefers not to mess up with it. Can put the blind up. We can try without blind. Yeah, but for to follow me, you can hide anywhere. And you can follow me to see if he's coming in daylight. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Well, we got to go with it. You know, there's a hyena here. He's active. He's hitting the bait. The smell is here. <laughs> The problem is the leopard could... Can the leopard could come and chase him away. Yeah. Not only the hyena. <laughs> yeah, we really... Yes, we are going to... And tonight we are going to move the meat in the middle of the road. So come here. If you are sitting here, in this chair. Dig it nice in for you. Right in position to shoot. Yeah. Wherever you 
We were about to stay in the open air to see whether the hyena would appear at dusk, but we would not be that unveiled because according to the plan, we were to build a small blind amidst the rocks at a convenient shooting distance. The most important thing is to have a solid foundation behind us so that every movement of ours is not seen at the background of the light rocks. Yeah. No, I can do that. Then I just shoot him. Johnny changed the rootstock where the bait was tied until then was some more solid that the hyena could not move. A high piece of brush on one side, I could always stand up and draw the hyena. After we prepared our blind for the evening, we could get back to camp so that we could have some rest and gather strength for our night vigil. Okay, I'm Johnny van der Rensburg from Ongarivanda Safaris in Namibia. Um, I'm the third generation on this property. We own this property from 1928. Um, we do trophy hunting from 1976 and I can offer you 26 plains game hunts with leopard and cheetah and brown hyena. Tonight we are going to wait for a brown hyena in a riverbed, dry riverbed with Archie Nesbitt and he is going to try to hunt a brown hyena. In that same place, the same spot is also a leopard. We do also um, dangerous game hunting and also big game hunting in the Caprivi on all other areas that it is possible and we do cater for for any kind of hunting that you would like. We can also organize some photo safaris tours through Namibia from the south up to the north and we can show you the Ovaimba tribe that is traditional of Namibia still. We can show you the Bushmans in this country that is still staying traditionally. Um, we can take you to the Caprivi to the nice big rivers and do tiger fishing and do elephant rides in, along the Zambezi. And we can also take you to the south for Sosa's Flay, the highest dunes in the, in the world and also the oldest desert in the world. After having a nice rest, in the early afternoon we headed towards the ambush location, which Johnny had been preparing for us for months. Johnny had prepared to protect us from the unwanted bait visitors at night. His rifle was loaded and ready in the case it was not only the hyena passing by our ambush. We didn't want to mess with leopards, but should some large spotted cat have decided we are a tasty dinner, we wouldn't have given up without a fight. We were ready for the long hours of waiting, and only one witness had noticed our arrival.
This was not the visitor we were expecting, so we hurriedly left the place before the meat hanging from the tree finished. It seemed that after the drought and the thousands of dead antelopes, predator's population had increased many-fold. Pure Namibian eland meat. I'm a growing boy. I have a... 20 ounce Elon steak cooked on the open fire, all the condiments, and as you'll see, I'm wine tasting tonight. I have two wines, and uh, there's one I haven't tried yet, so I'm working my way towards that. Uh, I should be, you know, I should be in good shape when dinner's over tonight. After our unsuccessful attempt the previous evening, ruined by the appearance of the leopards, we were once again to try our luck in hunting brown hyenas from the blind. The place where we were going to stay this evening was totally perfect. A real blind, prepared in a rocky niche, the only water source for tens of kilometers nearby. And the most important thing is, we had pictures where one could see the time at which the brown hyena was approaching the bait. Eighteen yards, that was two meters below the distance at which Archie's lowermost site was set. There we were well protected and we would hardly need any protection, yet Johnny had prepared his rifle. With so many leopards around, no one knows when he or she would be inclined in a hungry cat's menu. The red torch, is it working? I can't see right now, it's supposed to be working. We can't afford making such noise. He should just stand up and stretch and shoot. The water basin location was unique thanks to the fact that the Granite Mountain was the only uphill terrain in tens of kilometers around. And absolutely all wild fauna species that inhabit the surrounding bush gathered by the lake waters. I was by myself, but I could reach the 
about 20 yards away. We should go look at him. people would have hunted but we wanted a big male to have on this video and we think we probably got one of the greatest sequences of a bow killed free range baited big monster leopard that you'll ever see in your lifetime certainly 
I don't expect to experience anything like this again in my lifetime. They're such a tremendous animal. This is, this is the size of a jaguar. This is a monster. You know, I mean, I won't be able to lift this thing. That's Ethiopia, 2009. All of this is the result of SCI, Safari Club International. All our friends, all our associates, number one for hunters. You join SCI and you can experience this too. Archie had just finished his captivating story about his hunting adventure in Ethiopia and a deja vu occurred. A group of baboons got relocated by the water basin. Exactly when the sun's rays colored the landscape with their copper rays, the baboons ran towards the top of the mountain, and the animals remaining by the pool started moving with fear. Predator's time was approaching. The leopard passed in front of us as if parading, but didn't touch the meat at the bait. It seemed the magnificent animal was in a hurry for a meeting and didn't even pay attention to the blind. After they made themselves comfortable at their unapproachable rocky strongholds, the baboons seemed to calm down. The primates looked like they were observing the African sun that was setting down far to the west. The dusk was already thickening and it was almost time for the hyena to appear, should it adhere to its timetable from the previous days. Here it is. It is carefully sneaking in the bush, but didn't dare get out in the moonlight. Obviously, it was waiting for full darkness so that it could approach the meat unnoticed. Did you take it down? No, but I hit it very hard. I just don't know where. I don't know. Only one of us was armed and we were about to move in a group in order to avoid the risk of meeting the local leopard. I think I hit the shoulder, or a rib. I think it went through his shoulder. Ribs. I think it hit ribs and hit him pretty hard. And this is not lung blood. No. This is, this is, this could be heart or muscle. Mm. If the arrow is still in, it should be still cut. It's at all. It's <laughs> behind. This, this blood is... This? Yes. Yeah, this blood. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. We're going back and tomorrow morning. Yeah, we we'll get our gear and then we, we will come back tomorrow morning early and, and take the blood track into that thick bush and search for it. Yeah, we don't want to push them. It's a bow, you know, it's an arrow, so... You know, whether it's 45 minutes or an hour, you're supposed to leave him, so. Yeah, and and uh, the cave where he stays is not very far, so we don't want him to get into that cave. Then we are going to have problems to get it out. So we hope he's dead before that. So let's give it time. We come back tomorrow. Is it deep cave? Um, it's narrow. I don't think person is capable of going in there. It's, it's too narrow. But we, we are going to check tomorrow. Okay. Okay. 
Not possible. Nice broadside. Yeah, he was. A nice broadside. But your first side is at on 20 yards. Yeah. And and the the meat was at 80 yards, 18 yards. 18 yards. Yeah. 18 yards. So you couldn't get it low. I couldn't get it that low. Exactly. Is it good for soup? <laughs> oh, I don't want to put it on. You be able to see your sights? Mm -hmm. I don't want to. Okay. okay I'm not ready. I had some traffic. One thing, I don't think I'm going to fuck the bike on her, alright? Oh, perfect. Like for a Salamini shoot. You guys? Yes, yeah. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. Thank you, him tracking that thing. Could you imagine what could have happened if we had followed the blood in the dark? We left that leopard to eat up its rabbit in peace so it doesn't follow around the wounded hyena. Nevertheless, soon another two jumped out of the darkness. Obviously, the animals in their mating season were very active in our region. We hoped the leopards would have fun with something else and wouldn't follow our trophy hyena. Just in case, Johnny decided to send later on several well-armed trackers to check the tracks. Thank you for the incredible adventure. It's not over till it's over. Twenty mice running around and just the, the, all the grass was moving and your mice were running on t over my bow and... Really? Yeah. It really hit them rock solid, right? But bone. Uh-huh. It, it was dark enough. I hope I didn't hit him in the shoulder. But the arrow's, you know, in him. And, Good. And he's bleeding, so... Uh, A lot? It looked like it was in the rib cage. It looked like about eight inches of penetration. And what's the plan now? He, Johnny's going with the dog? No, we're going to wait till the morning. Uh-huh. Because okay. there's a cave. If he gets uh, into the cave yes. and dies, then we gotta. We don't know if we can get him out. Yeah, yeah. Better to keep him... Yeah, uh, just leave him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep him alone. Yeah. Otherwise it will go deeper and deeper. That's right, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Do we have the footage? Um, Anton told me that they um, went on the tracks and they find the tracks the way that you track as well yeah. and it turned back to the main road and then um, in the road several times the hyena was rolling maybe because of the pain and then back backwards to the big rock. So they don't know if it went back to the cave. Yeah. Okay. These brown hyena, people don't even know there's such a thing. They know there's a hyena, but they don't know there's a brown hyena. Yes. So yes. this is so unique to introduce to the hunting community. Yeah, and what's Excitement, feel the danger, share the adventure. 